Salute's Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Gomez Law Firm. I'm Tony Garzavale with the Gomez Law Firm, and we want to wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and give a special thank you to all the first responders and military members out there. Thank you so much and Happy Holidays. We're going to take you to some late breaking news now. Fire crews say they're carefully watching a home for any signs of the fire reigniting after flames tore through it just a couple of hours ago. Those flames breaking out around 8 p.m. in the 600 block of West Elmira Street. When crews arrive, flames can be seen coming from the two story home. We're told about nine fire crews were on scene. Fire officials believe the home is vacant due to it being boarded up and having no electricity running to it. We're told the home sustained around $50,000 in damage. Turning to politics now, President Trump is back on the campaign trail tonight, rallying in Georgia ahead of two crucial Senate election runoffs. That vote is scheduled for one month from today, January 5th, and it will decide who has control of the U.S. Senate. And both parties are pulling out all the stops. ABC's Elwin Lopez in Atlanta brings us the latest. President Trump in Georgia tonight as Democrats and Republicans go head to head, battling for voters in two contentious Senate races. We're gathered here tonight to ensure that David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler win the most important congressional runoff probably in American history. The president's rallying support for the GOP incumbents. All eyes in this country are in Georgia. What I'm trying to help you to see is that you have power. Who are fighting to keep their seats in the two runoffs that will decide the balance of power in the U.S. Senate for the next two years. Vice President Mike Pence pleading with Republicans to vote. I know we've all got our doubts about the last election. And I actually hear some people saying, just don't vote. My fellow Americans, if you don't vote, they win. But across the state, many Republicans are concerned the president's false claims of a rigged election will discourage voters on the right. They don't want to lose the Trump supporters. But by, by acting this way, they're going to lose another chunk of supporters. Potentially, it's a box they can't get out of. Meantime, President-elect Joe Biden is urging lawmakers to come to an agreement on a stimulus package as federal aid runs out and the coronavirus rages across the country, warning there could be dire trouble in this country if not. If we don't act now, the future will be very bleak. Americans need help and they need it now. And they need more to come early next year. Former President Barack Obama telling Democrats if they vote for Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff, it will make a big difference for the next administration when it comes to cooperation with Congress. If the Senate is controlled by Republicans who are interested in obstruction and gridlock rather than progress and helping people, they can block just about anything. Elwin Lopez, ABC News, Atlanta. A crisp, chilly, damp day. A good day to stay inside and do some holiday baking, perhaps. Yeah, I know some people who are baking cookies. I was not one of them. Yeah, I did that <laughs> yesterday, and my wife and daughter decorated them today with a friend. Oh, Ooh. that's a tradition of yours, isn't it? Yes, I bake them, they decorate them. <laughs> I don't want anything to do with that. <laughs> that's all perfect. I mean, perfect day to just stay in and do that today. Uh, that low pressure system that we've been talking about the past couple of days came in, kind of overperformed. So there was some light rain around at times today, but it didn't not add up too much at all. A few lucky spots saw a tenth or two tenths of an inch, but most spots saw only a few one hundredths of an inch of rain today. If even that places like Bernie uh, didn't register any rain today. So yeah, gray damp day. Clearing is happening as we speak. So overnight those clouds will clear out all across the area, leaving us with a beautiful day tomorrow with plenty of sunshine and highs in the mid 60s. Temperatures now starting to fall into the 30s, especially west of 35, where things have started to clear out uh, a bit earlier. 45 here in San Antonio, 47 there in Gonzales. Look at our dew points. We've got dew points in the 40s, especially along and east of 35. Dew points falling into the 30s off to the 
the west. So in some locations, we've got our air temperatures very close to our dew points. And because of that, we're starting to see some fog develop, especially down south of San Antonio. So Pleasanton, you are only reading a quarter mile visibility at this hour, two and a half miles in Stinson. Meanwhile, as you go north of Highway 90 at the airport, visibility is just fine for now, starting to see a drop in visibility at Randolph. So I do think we've got some fog developing, especially south and east of downtown San Antonio at this hour. And over the next few hours, some more widespread fog, especially east of 35 and well to the west, is not out of the question. So overnight, we could have some patches of fog out there. As we get into tomorrow morning, we start to warm up with the sunshine. Any lingering fog will be gone, certainly by uh, late to mid morning tomorrow. But just keep in mind, could be a little bit of patchy fog out there overnight through very early tomorrow morning. Across the country, there was a northeaster up in the northeastern United States today and the mid Atlantic dumping a lot of snow. Uh, but the focus for our forecast here was this counterclockwise swirl in satellite and radar. This is a piece of upper level energy or a cutoff low that has been spinning uh, center of circulation there just off to our northwest. This is what brought in the clouds today and also some of that light rain, but it is on its way out of Texas. It will continue to move east overnight by tomorrow. It's over in the southeastern United States and we are left with nothing but sunshine here in South Texas. So shaping up to be a really nice day tomorrow. Satellite and radar does show a lot of the cloud cover that this kind of gray color here is moving now east of 35 along with any lingering shower activity. Looks like we've still got a couple of sprinkles anywhere from near Goliad all the way up to Lavaca County and Hallettsville, but any rain that you would notice or that would add up to anything in the gauge uh, gauge that is all well off to our east now and again rain chances wrapping up here as our skies continue to clear out overnight. So the clouds will be gone. Keep in mind a little bit of patchy fog possible overnight, but we'll see beautiful blue skies uh, on your Sunday and overall to be a really nice day. Pretty much the complete opposite of what we saw today. Overnight temperatures falling down into the 30s, mid to upper 30s for a lot of us could see a freeze well off to the west of the hill country. Clear skies tomorrow morning. Clear skies into the afternoon with high temperatures mid to upper 60s for your Sunday. Could be a little bit breezy at times tomorrow. Northwest winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Pretty quiet weather through the back half of next week. Looks like our next front could offer another chance of some isolated rain, but that'll be toward Friday. Guys, the chilly weather with the sun, perfection. I know we need the rain, but if it's not going to give us rain, might as well be nice. Might as well be nice. <laughs> All right, Larry, the Spurs are set to have one of their key players come back next season. Yeah, there was a lot of question heading into this season. DeMar DeRozan, would he pick up his player option? Well, he did, and today he told us why. And in college football, Texas has a star in running back B. John Robinson coming up. DeMar DeRozan passed on free agency to stick with San Antonio for the upcoming 2020-21 NBA season. DeRozan led the Spurs in scoring last season at 22.1 points per game, and he thrived in Orlando playing small ball. Today, DeMar was asked why he decided to opt in and stay with the Spurs. For me, just being a competitor that I am, you know, um, I wasn't satisfied the way we, we ended the season. You know, it's always easy to kind of cop out and, you know, kind of, you know, a different situation that, that could heighten your chances, chances to kind of be more successful. But for me, I always never, I never ran from a challenge, you know, and I felt like it was so much still left on the table for us to do, especially the way we played in a bubble. DeRozan also confirmed reports he chased an intruder out of his home last month in Compton. He said everything is good and he's been through worse. In men's college basketball, the big showdown today between number one Gonzaga and number two Baylor was called off some 90 minutes before tip because two members of Gonzaga's travel team, including one player, tested positive for COVID-19. Now the two sides hope to reschedule the contest. Bo Nix and Auburn hosting number five, Texas A&M on this Saturday. Second quarter, second goal Tigers and Nix under pressure and somehow breaks free from the arms of Bobby Brown. He slips another tackle and off he goes crashing into the end zone for a spectacular five yard touchdown and the Tigers take the lead 10 to seven. I mean, look at that again. Bobby Brown has him wrapped up and he gets away. Brown is one of the top D linemen in the SEC. Impressive play right there. 
24 seconds left in the first half. Kellen Mond scores on a one-yard keeper, and the Aggies led at halftime, 14 to 10. Fourth quarter, Aggies down 20 to 14. Mond throws. The ball goes through the hands of a defender and right to Aggies tied in it. Jalen Weidermeyer for a 20-yard touchdown and the lead for good. Aggies win 31-20. And after the game, Mond credited his teammates for his success. I don't think I did. Um, anything different, um, I think, you know, just being self-critical from last week, and, you know, I knew I didn't play well. Um, just coming back, having a um, bounce back week, uh, and just having the people around me that um, give me the ability to do that with coaching and players. So, you know, I was really efficient today, but receivers and everybody else was making plays to, to allow me to be efficient. Today was Mon's 17th career game with a pass TD, a rushing TD, the most among active SEC QBs. A&M host Ole Miss next Saturday at Kyle Field. All right, Texas at Kansas State, and this game was all about Horns running back Bijan Robinson. First quarter, Sam Ellinger running the option, pitches the ball to Robinson for an easy 12-yard touchdown. Third quarter now, Bijan runs right. He slipped through the big guys up front, stays on his feet, and then uses his incredible speed to outrun the Wildcats for a 75-yard touchdown to make it 38-17 Texas. The true freshman rushed for a career-high 172 yards on nine carries and three touchdowns. I mean, my goodness. Quero great Jordan Whittington gets in on the fun, scoring his first collegiate touchdown on this reverse. Horns roll 69-31, racking up 334 yards on the ground. The old line, you know, set the, set the standard, set the tone. And, you know, I just give them all the credit because, you know, without them, uh, there would be no holes to, to run through and how, how everything felt, you know, from the beginning of the game. You know, it, it, was, it was good to see. Nasty moment in the second quarter when Texas right tackle and Reagan alum Derek Kerstetter suffered a horrific leg injury when his left foot turned completely around. He was carted off the field and taken to a hospital. Coach Herman said he suffered a dislocated ankle and Derek made it back. There he is to the locker room to celebrate with the team. Great to see that. And coming up later in sports, Reagan Volleyball State bound near Braunfels Canyon looking to join them. Guys, we'll look forward to hearing about it. Thanks, Larry. Tonight, the CDC is warning 120 Americans are testing positive for COVID-19 every single minute. Next on the night beat, how states are combating the surge and why more stay-at-home orders could be on the way. The U.S. passing another new milestone tonight in the coronavirus okay. pandemic. More Sounds than 280,000 Americans have now died from COVID-19, according to Johns Hopkins University. Hospitals across the country are feeling the strain as more states reimpose restrictions to help stop the spread. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. Business owners in Los Angeles fired up and fed up, protesting against new stay-at-home orders now in effect there as ICUs fill up. Capacity in Southern California now at just 13 percent. I was very upset and then I got angry. I want people to open their eyes to the financial devastation that they're creating within our community. California officials say they have no other choice, desperately trying to stop the spread, not only in the southern part of the state, but also in San Joaquin County, the two regions home to more than four million people. San Diego, also part of the stay-at-home order, closing dining and salons. Retail stores also limited at 20 percent capacity for at least three weeks. It is a deadly global pandemic that is ravaging our communities. We can do this. Uh, we've done it before. Uh, we just have to do it one more time. So there's no avoiding the situation we face in front of us. It is going to be difficult. It's going to be tough. Cities and states reimposing restrictions to help ease strain on hospitals and health care workers, reaching a breaking point coast to coast. One Minneapolis doctor telling CNN she and her co-workers are overwhelmed. We're suffocating in our patients' isolation and their fear. Um, it's suffocating in just the emotional and physical exhaustion of all of our colleagues. It's, it's feeling helpless because there's often nothing we can do for people. A new CDC report warns the U.S. has entered a phase of high-level transmission with 120 Americans testing positive every minute. The agency reiterating masks must be worn indoors everywhere except your home because the consequences could be life or death. 
As holiday shopping season begins, several states tying COVID outbreaks to indoor retailers. Health officials in Worcester, Massachusetts, urging people to stay out of stores following a surge in cases. Make the switch to doing your retail shopping by home delivery or by curbside pickup. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And American Airlines is preparing to help transport COVID-19 vaccines once the FDA gives authorization. The airline has a state-of-the-art cold storage facility in Philadelphia and has built a major infrastructure there, including specialized containers to hold the vials. CNN's Peter Muntean got a look inside the facility. This is American Airlines cargo cold storage facility in Philadelphia pharmaceuticals only, and essentially what is at one big refrigerator, 25,000 square feet. You can see the fans back there blowing cold air into here. You know, it is about 50 degrees in here right now, according to this thermometer, although I have to say it feels a lot colder. The idea is to keep the specialized containers for vaccines that need to be super cold, extra preserved, the Moderna vaccine, negative four degrees Fahrenheit, the Pfizer vaccine, needs to be negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit. They would probably sit on the shelves in here, but the idea is to not keep them here for very long. This is only a pit stop, albeit a very critical one, that airlines say in the quest of getting the vaccine from manufacturer to you to be administered. I just wanna show you one more way that airlines are helping keep the vaccine cold while it is in transit. This is a portable, battery-powered, refrigerated shipping container. You can set the temperature on the side of the container here, 32.8 degrees right now. If the temperature is off by only a quarter of a degree, alarms go off in this. It is the infrastructure like this that airlines say makes them ready for a mission of a lifetime. American Airlines says it has a plan in place that as soon as the FDA approves the vaccine, it can begin shipping it within 24 hours. Pete Muntean, CNN, Philadelphia International Airport. Meanwhile, mass vaccinations began in Moscow today with 70 different vaccination points opening throughout that city and operating for 12 hours a day. According to officials there, residents can get injected with the vaccine Sputnik V even though it has yet to complete phase three human trials. Officials say priority will be given to designated high risk groups, but everyone in the Russian capital will be eligible. Across the country, Russian officials say more than 100,000 people have been vaccinated already and widespread vaccination is expected to continue on Monday. Well, Hawaii wants people to move to the Aloha State to work, live and play, and is offering free round trip plane tickets and discounted hotel stays to persuade people. Wouldn't take a lot of people that long. The state launched the temporary residency program known as Movers and Shakers just last month. Hawaii wants out of state remote workers who will live and work there for at least 30 days while contributing to the state's economy. Initially, only 50 people will be chosen. Then applicants will be accepted on a rolling basis. The deadline for the first group of applicants is December 15th. To apply, you must be a remote worker and at least 18 years old. Those accepted into the program must also commit to a few hours every week in volunteering for a nonprofit. How would you feel about me doing broadcasts from the Hey, beach? I called it first. I called it first. You read it, you get to go. Okay. <laughs> What's more popular amid the pandemic, real Christmas trees or fake? The answer and why next. This essay salutes holiday greeting is brought to you by Gomez Law Firm. Hello, my name is Joseph Gomez. This is my wife, Lauren, and my son, JB, uh, with the Gomez Law Firm. We'd like to wish all our military personnel and frontline workers a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Decking the halls. Sure, there's a place for artificial trees, but this year's sales of live Christmas trees are seeing a huge boost. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Mort says families are looking to bring a little extra cheer into their homes and lives. For the Davenport family, the perfect tree is imperfect and real. A tall one. I, I, a tall I like one the with no I, holes. I want the bushy one and the tall one so that we can fit the most ornaments on it as possible. Yeah. So their search is on. Live Christmas trees are in high demand as families turn to tradition to jolly up what's been a Grinch of a year. So far this year, sales of real trees are up nearly 30%, according to a survey of tree retailers. Misty and Dan Rollins run this Holiday Hills tent. 
they are definitely yep. going back to real trees. They want that smell, they want that happy moment again. You know, it's an event to come out with your family and, you know, pick your tree. We love to watch the kids walk around and their eyes just light up. And people are evidently willing to spend some green. In 2008's recession, people still bought trees, but they bought smaller. This year they're buying and they're buying bigger. Whether a towering noble or a modest fir, shoppers say there's nothing quite like the scent and sentiments of a live tree, especially this year. Yeah, I think it says a lot with what's going on right now to be outdoors and to try to bring the outdoors indoors because you're indoors a lot right now. Yes. As for this family, they found their perfect tree in a year be that's been the, anything uh, but. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Nah, that's them balsams. <laughs> Name that movie. No one? I'm not a in. Christmas story? Oh, oh, I didn't hear what you said. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> the, the music was a little louder. <laughs> You're picking out the tree, and the, the guy's like, this is the one the needles are gonna fall off, and the guy selling the trees was like, nah, that's some balsams. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, for. sorry. Fail. <laughs> it's, right it is, it was my fail, <laughs> not your fail. You did no. good. It was. A, it could have been better. My timing was a little <laughs> off. Uh, so if you were maybe going to go pick out a tree today and the weather kind of scared you off, tomorrow will be much nicer. Plenty of sunshine. 65 our afternoon high. A little bit of a breeze in place on your Sunday afternoon. Another look at the forecast is coming up next. We've still got plenty of time for me to make Christmas movie references. Okay. So I'll work on my timing. <laughs> I'll make some too, and you guys might not get them. That's fine. Now, I watched Die Hard the other day, which is a Christmas movie. <laughs> yes. Hans Gruber, Gruber has fallen off of the Nakatomi Plaza Tower, so it's officially Christmas. The holidays are here, yeah. <laughs> Love it, love it, yes. It feels like the holidays are here. It, it, yes, today was a very um, Christmassy day, kind of felt like it was nice and cool out there because we were socked into the clouds up until a couple hours ago. Here's a look at the time lapse. Plenty of gray skies today, even a little bit of light rain. That was a bit of a surprise. We did have enough saturation in place to have some light rainfall, but didn't add up to much at the airport. One one hundredth of an inch. Not very, not very generous with the rainfall today. 37 our morning low, only up to 52 this afternoon because of the clouds and latest view from our camera. I do think we're starting to see some fog develop on our camera here and there is some fog developing in and around Bear County, especially down to the south near Pleasanton. So Southern Bear County, Eastern Bear County down to Wilson Carnes County. It looks like we are starting to see visibility drop everywhere else fine for the time being as we zoom in a little bit closer here. The airport is down to six mile visibility, but again, it looks like the densest fog is from Stinson there in Southern Bear County and then it's Northern Atascosa County. One mile visibility in Pleasanton. That's actually improved a bit over the last uh, 20, 30 minutes or so. Overnight patchy fog will be possible through early tomorrow morning. It could be dense in spots, but overall coverage of the fog should be pretty patchy. Our skies are clear, so the reason the fog is developing now is because our skies have cleared out. That is going to allow for our temperatures to begin to really steadily fall over overnight into the low 40s, eventually upper 30s. So we'll get those air temperatures down a bit closer to the dew points overnight, and that sets us up for the patchy fog. So some fog possible through early tomorrow morning. As soon as the sun comes up, our temperatures will start to climb and any fog that's lingering through dawn tomorrow will quickly clear on up 59 at lunchtime, 65 your high temperature tomorrow. We're looking at clear skies from start to finish on Sunday. So a big change from what we saw today. Breezy at times tomorrow. Northwest winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. High temperature in Dallas today, 64. Some cold air there over the higher elevations and also big, uh, big drop here. Here, uh, some cold air from uh, Atlanta up to Cleveland there. Their high temperature today just 40 degrees. And there was actually a really big weather maker up in the mid Atlantic and northeast today. This is a nor'easter pushing a lot of heavy rain into portions of New England, including Maine here uh, along, up to Bangor, Maine. They're looking at 8 to 12 inches of snow. Um, I may have, did I just say snow? I don't know if I said rain or snow. I meant to say snow. 8 to 12 inches of snow here. That's what that blue is, Katie. Uh, and here are the winter weather reports from today. Because of this nor'easter, a lot of spots picking up anywhere from 2 to 5 inches of snow. But again, there likely will be some much higher totals across portions of New England because of that 
nor'easter. Our focus for our weather here today is another weather system, an upper level low that has been spinning off to our northwest today. This is what brought in all the cloud cover and that light rain. It is going to be moving east and out of Texas tonight. And as that happens, uh, we're going to see our skies continue to clear out. I don't know what's I don't know what's happening. I don't know why that screen was blank. I don't think it was supposed to be, but we'll just roll with it. Much nicer day tomorrow, 65, and we'll see a gradual warming trend heading into the middle of next week, up to the low to mid 70s by the middle of the week, but humidity will stay low. So even though it'll be a little warmer, it's still going to be very comfortable. Monitoring our next chance of rain toward the end of next week as our next cold front arrives. Guys, ooh, that would be good Christmas tree shopping weather. I like all of that there. Yeah, all me the too. things. <laughs> Nice, nice. Very Copy nice. paste. Yes. All right. Uh, some seasons are over for high school football teams. Others are continuing to play. Yes. Uh, BGC action 5A and 6A. The regular season ended today for those classes. Got a couple of games for you, including Highlands and Sam Houston. Plus, New Braunfels Canyon Volleyball was playing for a spot in the state semis. Coming up. Warren taking the field for their District 29-6A showdown with Marshall on this final Saturday in the regular season. First quarter, Marshall quarterback Dylan Cooper flips the ball to Anthony Conway, and dude has tons of room thanks to his offensive line. He picks up 18 yards before going out of bounds inside the 30. Moments later, handoff goes to Josiah Garcia for a three-yard touchdown. The Rams lead 10 to nothing, and they go on to win 58-28. Hurricane warning at Alamo Stadium. Sam Houston facing off with the Highlands Owls. First quarter, Kane's trying to catch the Owls off guard on four Fourth down, Devontae Brooks acting like he's looking for a play call. The snap goes to Ronald Wilson, who takes off running, but he gets knocked out of bounds short of the first down. Al's ball on downs. Next play, handoff goes to number 22, Demarion Gonzalez, and he picks up 10 yards inside the 15. Then Jacob Gutierrez hands off to Henry Caballero. It's 7-0 Highlands, and they win it 14 to zip. The Owls are playoff bound. And in Taps Division Three state quarterfinals played in Bastrop, Holy Cross beat Woodlands Legacy Prep 15. 9 to 22. Take you to Buta Johnson for the Class 5A Region 4 final between New Braunfels Canyon and Dripping Springs. Cougarettes trailing two sets to one, but they show fight in the fourth. Courtney Pope gets up for the huge block. Canyon goes up 5-3. Their defense keeping them in it. Watch this. Kyla Malone and Addison Evans combined for a pair of great digs on the back line to keep the ball alive. But the Tigers offense capitalizes on the second chance. Natalie Arnold brings down the hammer cross court. Kill drip leads 15 to 13. Cougarettes return fire with a 4 0 run. Aaron Jones goes to the back line and gets the call. Canyon leads 17 15, then tied at 22. Malone gets a push shot to hit off the blocker and out. Canyon is two points away from forcing a fifth set, but the Tigers close on a 3 0 run of their own, and it's Arnold delivering the decisive block. Canyon ends their season just short of a state berth. They fall to Dripping Springs three sets to one. They're devastated and sad, and it's been a long, hard road. Um, as you know, uh, under these circumstances, it's been even harder, and so I think the emotional investment is even bigger, and so the hurt is even harder. Canyon ends their wonderful season with an overall record of 24-2. and two. In the Class 6A ranks, Reagan has advanced the UIL State Tournament for the first time since the 2016-17 season. After losing both of their matches against the Broncos during the regular season, the Rattlers rallied from an early deficit to defeat Brandeis three sets to one last night at Northside Sports Gym. Senior outside hitters Naya Anderson and Julia Ailman combined for 34 kills on the night, and both were ecstatic that their team is moving on to the next round. Honestly, this match is probably one of the most important matches that we've ever had, and it's a really big thing. And they were a really good team, and you know it was a really tough challenge, and it just means everything that you know we got out there, we did our best, and we ended up successful. We definitely learned a lot about ourselves, and especially within playoffs, we've had a harder run, which gave us the advantage, and I think that was definitely like important for us to do. So we came back, and we came back a different team. It's fantastic. It feels great, especially with this team and everybody on it. It's just awesome to push and be where we're at right now. Reagan will face Seven Lakes in the Class 6A state semifinals on Monday at the Merrill Center in Katy. That match is scheduled to begin at 5 p.m. Best of luck to Reagan. They're good luck so, indeed. So good. Yeah. yeah. Very impressive. All right, we'll be back. Finally tonight, here's something good. The year 2020 brought us a new kind of superhero.
who instead of capes wear scrubs. We're talking about nurses and Marvel Comics has teamed up with Allegheny Health Network in Pennsylvania to create a new comic book celebrating real life healthcare heroes. It's called the True Nurse Stories comic book. It focuses on the stories of actual nurses who work near Pittsburgh and everything they've done to keep us all safe during the pandemic. The project was unveiled Thursday and it was a complete surprise to those nurses. Very cool. I love that and the, the drawing is incredible. Yeah, they are heroes. Yes, they are. Tomorrow, much nicer weather. Sunshine high near 65, a little bit of a breeze here or there. Pretty quiet through the middle of next week. We'll warm back into the low 70s. It'll be very comfortable, though, with low humidity. Looks like our next front, next front tries to sneak in late next week, and that would be our next chance at some showers. All right, that's all of our time for tonight. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to catch Good Morning San Antonio tomorrow morning starting at 6. And have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.